when you are configuring the routers in your environment, you have two choices on how the router determines what routes it needs to take to get to a certain destination. You have dynamic routing and you have static routing. In dynamic routing, all of your routing protocols make the decisions on their own. They don't ask you for anything. They don't wait for your input. You're not required to configure anything particular. It is completely hands-off. There's no human intervention whatsoever, and it's all automatic. In that way, you don't have to do very much on the router. You simply tell the router, figure out where all the routes are by yourself using your built-in routing protocols, and you can figure everything from there. I don't want to touch anything. I don't want to type anything in in the configuration of the router. If there's ever an occasion then for a route to disappear, if part of your network has an outage, if there's a failure in one of your switches, and suddenly there's a route that you can't get to, the dynamic routing algorithm is going to figure that out on its own, and any convergence that occurs will take place as part of that routing protocol. You don't have to step in. You don't have to click any buttons. You don't have to configure anything else. Again, it is very dynamic as to how it operates. The amount of time that occurs during this convergence process can vary depending on the routing protocols that you choose. Some routing protocols tend to converge very quickly. Others take a little bit more time. It differs from one routing protocol to another. There are a lot of different options if you want to use routing protocols. RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP are just a few examples of some of those routing protocols that you give a basic configuration to, and they take care of all the routing decisions from there. As the name implies, static routing is a type of routing method that requires you to statically input all of the different routes. So if there is a route that traffic needs to go to get to the internet, you have to program that into your router. If there's an internal server farm and you have to make sure people are able to route properly to that server farm, then you have to configure that in your router. It is all done statically and it's all up to you to make sure your router knows where all of the different routes are in your environment. This can be a very simple process. It can be very complex. It just depends on the architecture of your particular network. A simple configuration would be leave everything here in this local network unless you're going to the internet and then go out to this internet port. There could be really one single route inside of your router that says keep everything local except for internet traffic, and then you go out this default route. Static routing, although it seems very complicated to set up, it seems like there's an effort, extra effort involved, seems like it's more work than you would want to do, is actually a very, very common thing, especially when you get into very large environments. Some people are very concerned that dynamic routing protocols might not do exactly what they want it to do. They would like more control over their routing, or perhaps they trust that they're going to put in the routing information themselves. So you'll find that it's relatively easy to configure. And later on, we're going to have a video where we will begin configuring static routes within your router. And it does give you that complete control so that you know exactly where your traffic is going. A very common configuration, if you're sending out to the internet, for instance, is to put in what we call a default route. You might say for internet traffic, which is all traffic, 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which is a shortcut for everything, send all of that traffic out port 1 to this next hop router out there on the internet side. And that next hop is 10.1.1.1. Maybe you have some local traffic, and that Local traffic is 10.1.2 network with a slash 24. Send all of that traffic out port 2 to the next hop of 10.1.2.20. Those are very common static ports that you might expect to see in your router. And whether you're using dynamic routing or static routing, the ultimate goal is to make sure that all of your end users' traffic is able to get to its final destination.